Next question is from Lockie Maloney. When is the best time to train the core and how often? Uh, you know, that's actually not a bad question because I don't think it's a good idea if you're doing a multiple body part workout or a full body workout to train your core before you train everything else. Yeah, well, you don't want to fatigue well, the core yeah. and then go into heavy backloaded squats or deadlifts, right? Yeah. That would not be ideal. It's so involved in everything that training your core first yeah. Just is going to increase your instability. It's not a good idea. Yeah, your last line of defense, right? Yeah. Like uh, that's what's keeping uh, your spine, everything intact and in good alignment. While now you can add stresses, external stresses on top of that. So you want that nice and fresh and not fatigued. But at the same time, too, in terms of like training it, like frequency of training it is a good idea is something that you want to make sure like you do have a strong core and it's like finding its way repeatedly in your programming. Well, that's, that's why I, I program it either at the end of a workout or on a separate day. Yes. Uh -huh. Because what you don't want is, and it's not that you couldn't do it at the beginning of the workout or in the middle of the workout. It's like, I just, you don't want to fatigue that muscle, uh, doing something that is heavy loaded. Uh, Probably not that big of a deal if you're training more hypertrophy or endurance type training where it's high reps and you're never really loading the bar that much. Probably not that big of a deal if you were to train core in the beginning or the middle. But definitely if I'm in the middle of a strength phase, um, the last thing that you want to be fatigued is your core when you're you know, loading the barbell up. It's just dangerous to do that. And it doesn't make any sense. Not to mention you're going to get some good core work while you do that. I mean, when you... Mm -hmm brace your core for a heavy backloaded squat or a deadlift, you are training your core. So I wouldn't want to do anything like lots of reps or fatiguing until the end of the workout. Yeah. The best results I ever got with core would be a little bit of exercise, a little bit of core work at the end of every workout. So at the very end, I do something and then a couple days a week that's just uh, core related. And usually what it would look like would be some kind of a carry or some kind of a functional core movement to start with. Mm -hmm. I like suitcase carries or overhead carries or windmills. Windmills are actually really good mm -hmm. for stabilization. A little bit of counter rotation or rotation, so a cable chop or one where your hands are close at your sides and then you press out in front of you, so you're just increasing the tension but maintaining stability. Yeah. And then finish off with direct core work like your reverse you know, crunches or your slow sit-ups and stuff like that. And I got incredible results that way. But yeah, yeah, I, I would say you probably definitely don't want to work your core before you do anything that involves yeah. any compound lift because uh, if your core fatigues faster than the rest of your body and your form breaks down because your core is weak, the risk of injury is really high. Well, and too, like uh, definitely the same kind of formula where it was like at the end of the workout of my heavy days and like just a little bit. But uh, the days in between, like – that's my opportunity now to really express this um, twisting and rotating and anti-rotating type of movements that uh, it's really hard to program those otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, which provides so much value because now too, like your body will just respond when you get in a pinch, when you get in a, a, a non sort of robotic, uh, you know, isolated type of a movement, which is pretty much everyday life. Uh, you know, you're going to have some kind of like micro rotation or something happen where you got to stabilize and adjust. Uh, and to be able to keep that you know, regular in your routine is going to keep you, uh, keep your longevity going even further. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I, when I really realized the importance of core strength and stability, cause you learn this right as a trainer, I always talk about it, it becomes a sales pitch when you, when you're talking about your training and how much the core is important and all that stuff. But I remember when I would train, uh, athletes who hired me to augment their training, I trained some triathletes, I've trained some marathon runners and Ironman competitors. And because of their, the style of their, their training for their sport, they're constantly doing something. They're running or they're cycling or they're swimming. And my resistance training was always like a once or twice a week type of thing just to maintain strength and, you know, prevent muscle loss and, and prevent injury. And I'll never forget, and this happened, this was true for all of them. If I trained their core really hard, they could not do anything else for the rest of the day. Like I could train their legs. I could hammer their upper body. Mm -hmm. They could go cycle, swim, no problem. If we beat up their core... They couldn't do any of that stuff. And they would always come back and be like, yeah, I could, I cycled afterwards or I ran after, and my back bothered me. So yeah. we can't do core except for at the end of the day when I've done everything. And I remember that. That was like all, like every single one of them was the same thing. If we did core, it had to be after they did everything else or by itself. Otherwise it would, you know, impede their performance. 
Hey, if you like this clip and you want to see more like this, click right here. But if you want to see the full episode where this clip came from, click right here.